Good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice on this beautiful day. I'd like for you to uh, take a moment and I'm gonna introduce my daughter, Adeline Averill. She plays viola. We're gonna play for you a short excerpt from a duo by a man named Graham. The title of the piece is Duo for Viola and Cello. <laughs> so much for coming and playing with us. Um, it's wonderful to see you as you, as I said earlier, I do have one quick joke for you and then I'd like to turn things over to Mr. Eby before we move on today. Here's the joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Duet. Duet who? Do it right or do it not at all. Ah. All right, Mr. Eby, take over for a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna pin my video up here. <laughs> As I go, thank you so much. That was delightful. It's always fantastic to make music with family members, especially if that's possible. It's very fun. So today we're gonna be reviewing and having some fun doing some review things. We're gonna start with Ode to Joy. So. Take a look outside and see the beautiful sunshine. And you're going to drink all of that sunshine into your body, into your cello, into your bass. And so imagine what sunshine sounds like. What is the tone of sunshine? So for instance, if I were to look out on a freezing, cold, miserable day, I might sound like this. Or if it was really, really hot out, it might be like uh, just a little bit like that. But instead of the sunshine in this beautiful, cool weather, uh, it fills me with glorious, warm, and full sound. So we're going to do the D major scale, uh, two bows per note, full of sunshine in your sound. Here we go. Ready? D scale. D. Ode 
to joy with beautiful sunshine in your sound. Ready? And explain in the uh, beginning steps for vibrato which is on my YouTube uh, in this channel uh, under the beginning cello videos I think it's under the beginning videos. my mom has vibrato does she kind of wibble yes wibble? exactly she has vibrato <laughs> fantastic so the the three things that you're going to be doing the first is this you're going to place your thumb ever so lightly light 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 bases you can do this too on the back of the neck and you keep this elbow out here and you pivot from there so you're going to feel some motion all the way back in your shoulder as you just slide back and forth and back and forth once you get the hang of this after you do it for a long time then you can start to narrow it as you bring it to uh to stability there good so that's the first thing second thing are these finger push-ups placing your fingertips right on the edge of the top of the cello or the bass here and going up and down. This is to increase the flexibility of your knuckles, which is really, really important as you go here. So you do them here and then you can do them here as well on the string. It's really good for loosening up these muscles as you go. Now we're going to turn this into a paintbrush. You're going to brush down like this and then straighten back up this way. Brush down and straighten this way. Again, just loosening up those muscles so that as you vibrate, everything in here is loose. The third thing we're going to do is getting fingerprinted. So you're going to take your first finger and you're going to lay it here and then you're going to tell this hand to go to sleep. And then we're going to take these two fingers. We're going to go over here and we're going to wiggle the finger in its socket. So notice that I'm not turning this hand at all. It's asleep completely. All I'm doing is I'm taking this finger and I'm wiggling it in its socket. And it's gonna feel weird because we never get that in, in real life. And you can do it with second finger, you can do it in third finger and pinky as well. Remembering to keep this hand, this hand sleep, and then just wiggling it this way. This again helps to elicit or to make the movement in that hand possible as we go. Okay, now go tell Aunt Rhody. Uh, we're going to switch to the Portland is Awesome, Mount Hood, Timberline, Oaks, Park and Powell's, Salt and Straw Ice Cream version, because that's what kind of a day it is. Even if we can't go to those places, we can still think of them. So here we go. Go tell Aunt Rhody with sunshine in your sound, sunshine in your soul. Come, body, da, da. Starts on feet. Two. Ready. Go. <laughs> to do this we're going to be needing to use a metronome and a metronome once again is one of those it used to be one of those mechanical things that went tick tock tick tock and in order for you to be able to submit your video you have to be able to be one of those people that can 
uh, can use this. So we're going to set it to a quarter note equal. Yeah, quarter note equals 66 um, as we go. So I'm going to launch this up a little bit louder. So just to give you an example of what it means to be playing with this metronome. Oh, I've never done this way. To, I feel like a Borg. Ready? Ah. <laughs> to take this and then you have to put it into headphones so you have to wear headphones so that the click does not show up in the recording because as you record yourself you don't want the click to be in the recording that you send uh, as we go so more information as we go mr. Averill you know it it might be a good idea for them to practice starting with a metronome I've noticed that it is very difficult for many students to actually begin their sound with the metronome. And for some of my students, I suggest that they count to four before they start. So they're listening and they go, one, two, three, four. And then it'll be easier to come in with that pulse on the metronome. Those of you who like to jump rope or to skip rope, where two people are twirling the rope and you have to time it and jump in, if you have practiced that, you're going to have a pretty easy time of being able to coordinate this. So all that jump rope will play off. Let's practice that. So this is going to be clicking. It's just clicking. You don't have to worry about it starting at any one. And we're going to count. One, two, three, four. Or you can say one, two, ready, and. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Averill. That's a really, really good um, recommendation as we go. All right. So, um, you know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if it's, yeah, it's probably just easier for them to do it with a metronome um, rather than following a recording. Okay. So now we go to Sunshine in Allegro. So, uh, can you please go to Allegro? We get that high D going and prepare for sunshine. In this case, it's gonna be beautiful long bows. Let me just do a couple bows to show you what I mean. Sorry, I'm, I'm in Go Talent Roadie tempo. Actually, that's not a bad tempo. So you're expanding the sound with every single bow stroke. Remember, this one is all loud except for the end of the third line. It's going to be all loud. Here we go. Sunshine in Allegro. One, two, sunshine, go. sunny days even if I can't play outside. Back to you, Mr. Abram. All right. Well, we're going to do a little work first on uh, Betsy from Pike, and we're going to do it today using pizzicato and a little bit of air bowing just so that we get the feel for the piece. I'm going to actually have you say the fingerings. This will be first for the cellos, and then I will do the basses second. So let's start with the cello fingering, and we'll go through it together. I'm gonna to use that same pulse that Mr. Eby had. It was a nice, steady, gentle, sunny pulse. 
one, two, three, one, two. D, D, three, A. A, four, one, one, D, D, D. D, D, three, A, four, 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 three, A, A, A. A, four, 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 three, A, three, four, A, one, A. D, three, 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 A, four, one, one, D, D, D. So we have not practiced that far at all, but I think if we utilize the pizzicato, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, we're using only the D and the A string for the cellos. And I'm gonna have you pitz this once and then I'll switch over to the basses and do the same process. So for the cellos, again, that nice steady pulse, get your index finger ready to go. Remember that when you're pitzing, you're anchoring the thumb on the side of the fingerboard. I don't want to see somebody pitzing with their thumb here in the fist and coming up and over. Much nicer if you just gently anchor it there. All right, so we're going to start on the D. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two. Let's go ahead and switch over to the basses and give them the opportunity to go through their fingering pattern. Um, old Betsy from Pike. <clears throat> so here we go for the basses. One, two, three, one, two. D, D, four, G, one, one, G, one, one, D, 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 four, one, shift up to the four, 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 two, shift back to the one, 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 shift up to the four, 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 two, shift back to the one, four, G, one, four, one, D, four, 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 one, G, one, one, D, D, D. So, uh, just Mr. E. Yeah, so there's a D one that's, that should be right there at the second or last measure. Um, it sure should be. There should be a D one right there. That's a misprint. Um, I bet that they would catch that. I sure hope so. Apologize for that mistake. Um, you may notice basses that there's a considerable amount of shifting. And before you were to play through this, I would really advise that you work on the, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, the fifth into the sixth bar. I would practice going from, I'll pretend this is a bass, practice going from one, shifting to four. One, shifting to four. One, shifting to four. Then of course you've got the two, and then you have to shift back to that one. So I would practice two, back to the one, two, and I would do it over and over again so that you're comfortable with that. Let me go ahead and play that pizzicato for you. It'll sound very much like the cellos because I'm playing a cello. One, two, three, one, two.
So I had to take over for Mr. Averill because unfortunately he has become frozen. It's kind of like the uh, <laughs> the the game of freeze tag there. Let's see if he comes back in um, at any point. I hope he does. But if not, you're stuck with me. <laughs> So we're going to end next by speed finding the notes. On the D string, everybody, you have to find the note on the count of one, two, three, F sharp. On the A string, you have to find the note, ready, go, B. And then finally, on the G string, you have to find the note, ready for it, A, go. So I'll do those again. So on the D string, I can't remember which letters I said. We're gonna find the note on the D string, F sharp, go. Cellos should be a three, basses is a four. On the A string, find the note B, go. First finger for everybody. On the G string, it was, it was the note A. First finger for everybody. Uh, cellos is going to have a B, third finger basses, there's going to be a B, a fourth finger for that B as we go here. All right. I think that is a fantastic day. Please review your other songs with um, sunshine in all of them. So sunshine and twinkle, uh, even Scotland's Burning. <laughs> Big wide open sounds, French folk song, all these different aspects of sunshine. It can be warmth, it can be energizing, um, and it can be just richness and fullness as we go. All right, we'll see you tomorrow with our special guest, Miss Stingle, as she comes. All right, bye bye, everybody.